Welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with co-host Guy. Nice to have you back, pal. Thank you. Nice to be back. Episode 127. It is. Um, Apologise, a little bit of a late apology for last week's podcast. We didn't do one. It was Easter weekend. We couldn't get, quite get one done. However, I feel like today's podcast makes up for it. Is that your best apology? In abundance. It's kind of half-hearted. Grovel bit. more, please. No, it's half-hearted. <laughs> I wanted a bloody day off, all right? We, it was Easter Monday. We I weren't coming in. I begging you to do a podcast. I was going, Rick, please, I'll come off my holiday early. Let's get one in the bank, people. <laughs> you just weren't asked. Terrible. In today's podcast, we do have a guest. We do. And I think it's... it's We've just recorded that section of the podcast. It is a phenomenal story. I'm going to tease it a little bit. If you remember last year, people listening, watching, they would have seen and heard and watched and known about a young Australian golf professional mm. by the name of Min Woo Lee. Yes. Now, the video that I did with him at St. Andrews playing in rever- reverse went crazy. He was on the podcast. People loved him. You guys absolutely loved him and followed him ever since. And he even admitted it at the start of this podcast we're going to hear off him soon he puts it all down to the fact he was on this podcast i think it's nothing to do with practice dedication hard work talent talent you come on the rick shields golf show podcast you win dp world tour events it's that simple that's what happens that's what happens well min Wu, at the end of last year was 49th best player in the world which got him automatic invite to the masters so a couple of weeks ago, he played in the Masters and we sit down with him and basically I grill him on every small... Do you think I went too, like, too <laughs> detailed? No. My worry was, you might be like, right, so first thing you had the breakfast, you had your wee mix of breakfast, right? Then you went for a wee at half nine, then you went for the putting in for 15 minutes, but I you were good. I literally wanted to know no, everything. It, you know what was really good about that? There was a couple of things. Firstly, I feel like everyone listening feels like they know Min Woo now from the podcast, from the videos, etc. But I feel like you've had that with us in this podcast. Same with you. He was really open, really honest, and he wanted to be here. And I think we've got a good thing with him now because I, I think we'll get him on again. And yeah. they'll be like, what's that like to play in the open at St. Andrews, etc. Yeah. Yeah. He was so good. And some of the insights he gave us to the Masters was phenomenal. But not only did he play in his first Masters, not only did he make the cut, he came tied 14th. And shot the course record for the front nine. On a Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, it's class. Um, he is f- uh, dialing in from Perth. Um, there's a slight audio issue. His actual microphone's really good, but he said he was saying he was super hot and we discovered after it was like a bit of a fan. Like a desk fan, yeah. Which which now and again just blows into, but I d- it doesn't disturb the audio. So that's going to be coming up in this podcast. Stay tuned. It's, it's a podcast of two halves, really. It We've is. got, well, maybe also three thirds. We've got a little third of us at the start, and then a big two thirds of Min Woo Lee. Yes. Um, but how, are you, how are you, mate? You good? Yeah. Enjoy your holiday. Yes. You I've... were missed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was almost as authentic as my apology. No, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. You were yeah. missed. You were. Yeah. Uh, there was lots of incredible comments saying, "Where's Guy? Where's the, yeah, Guy?" Yeah. There was also lots saying Matt Fry is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> no, Matt was gr- Matt stood in. Um, you said to me before I went away, "Look, I think we should do get Matt on because a lot of people might not realise Matt's his, Matt Matt should have got a hat trick ball. That's his third time on the podcast. Oh God, he yeah. actually was." on the second ever episode no way. which was like november 2019 there you go and that was an audio one then he'd one in your garage back in the lockdown days and now he came on so in theory he does deserve a little present there you go um, what are you he did get? A gr- i will get him a nice firm handshake you'll get him and never return to the podcast <laughs> award <laughs> i know what i felt like so i, I had a little whinge because i was upset because people were saying how much better it was without me i get very emotional and somebody left a comment on twitter and he said it's like when you he said i'm a school teacher <laughs> And he said, when I'm away for a day or something, they have to get a supply teacher in. I come back to school and all the kids tell me how much better it was without me. <laughs> That's how I felt. No, Matt was great. He killed it. And uh, the episode did really well. Obviously, a lot of people were dying to hear your thoughts on the Masters. And obviously, we've not chatted about it too much. Certainly not on the podcast because I've not been here. But it was a great Masters, wasn't it? Was. It was. You know, it was one of those ones where even though Scottish Scheffler kind of walked away with it in the end, it was. It still had little subplots Glory. of drama wow. and all sorts. So, um, it, and obviously Tiger and everything else. So, it, I thought it was really good. And if anything, it heats up. The fact I honestly believe, are we in store for possibly one of the most exciting years of tournament golf ever? I feel like more than ever, 
there's literally more players up there who you wouldn't be surprised if they won. Correct. That's the thing. It's like there's always obviously, even when Tiger was killing it, you had your VJs, your Ernie's, your Teeth Goosens who were doing bits, who were really great players. But now you look at like the field for the Open, let's just say. If I said to you, Marikau's going to win again. Yep. Yeah, okay. Victor Hovland's going to win. Exactly. Yep, that's Scottish fine. Scottie wins it. Like, yep. John Rahm, yep. Rory. You could literally J- go on. JT, Dust, Dustin, Jordan Spieth Dustin, exactly. just won last week. Dustin Johnson. We literally could go on all day. It, it is. It's so much competition out there. I think, we said this before, on the, well, it will come later on when we're speaking to uh, Min Wu about how excited I actually am for the Open now yeah. because I think this year, the 150th, I know we've said this countless times, I'm going to keep saying it, it is going to be special. Tiger is going to be there. He confirmed it, which is incredible. Um, we have just also locked in our position at the Open. Yes. We're going to be there from Monday through till the last put on Sunday night. And we'll be in the Dunvegan celebrating with Tiger after he's just won his Open, doing shots of Sambuca in the eyeball. The only thing, yes, in the eyeball. The only <laughs> thing I'm not sure on, though, is the Tiger outfits I've ordered, the actual, like, Tiger <laughs> striped outfits. You said like, it was one condition, I can come with you, but I have to dress as a Tiger. <laughs> I've got you like a <laughs> Tony the Tiger costume. Like a, It's great. <laughs> it's great to be back. Um, yeah, so the, I, I honestly think with everything going on, with all these, with all these, this pool of talent, like who says Minwoo Lee can't win the Open? I like, think he could win the Open. He won't say he can't. Like, I just think that the depth of field is so bloody strong. Um so, yeah, that's going to be really exciting. And then... Um, you know, just a quick one on that, though. What I'm chuffed about is I feel like, and I'm going to hold my hands up a little bit here, I wasn't quite on the Scottish Sheffield train. I wasn't against it by any means. I understood he was an awesome golfer. He'd won, was it twice already? Was, was it three? Was it two he'd won and he was just killing it? And then, obviously, the third was yeah. the Masters. <clears throat> I feel like now he's actually won a major as well. It almost puts you into that category of like... Oh, it's three, three wins. And then, then right. the Masters. So he'd won three times. He was obviously killing it. But to win the Masters, I, I just felt like it put like that... It solidified it. Like, yeah. he's going to go down in history now as an amazing golfer. I kind of thought, and this is, again, not taking any discredit from him because he's won some massive tournaments. Like, he's won the Phoenix Open. He won the Bay Hill tournament, at the Arnie tournament at Bay Hill. He won the WGC match play. Like they are hard events to win. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're not pony tournaments, right? Yeah. <clears throat> he gets to world number one, but you kind of still think he's kind of not. He's fast forward his way there. Like mm. he's not cheated his way <laughs> there. But does, does he deserve it? Well, he came out and won the Masters yeah. by by should have been five. It was three in the end, but he won the Masters and was like, yeah, I deserve it. That's that's the thing. And now, like, literally. For the rest of his days, he will be going in his green jacket. It is that's. I must admit, again, I kind of am slightly team open over team masters. Again, we've said that a million times. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to pick one, but I do think when you win the masters, it it feels like it weirdly puts you in a different place. So even winning the open, like mm. Ben Curtis, Todd Hamilton have won the open. You can't take that away from him. Paul Laurie, he's gone on to know a lot of things. His career, I get that. But when you win the masters, you're going back every year with that green jacket. It does feel like it puts you into a different like stratosphere of almost fame. Do you weirdly think it is that club on the Wednesday night, like the Wednesday dinner? Oh, that picture that you get? Yeah. I think it is. Because every single Masters, you see that that Champions Dinner that they have, and they have this fantastic picture with all the greats, everyone it's, that's won the Masters that are still alive and kicking and, and can make that night. Mm-hmm. If you did that with the Open, maybe you would remember some yeah. names that we've forgotten about. Like, maybe if you did that and actually put all the Open champions together every year, uh, you know, whatever the venue would be, I do think you'd go, oh, God, it suddenly re-sparked these memories of, like you say, Todd Han- Hamilton winning, yep. Ben Curtis winning. What are they doing now? I, I, I don't, I'd love to know. I should get them on. Speaking of the Masters, um, obviously Augusta National is arguably the most phenomenal golf course in the world. And it was designed by Dr. Alistair McKenzie. Yes. This week, well, last week now, people listening, we have gone on the most outrageous adventure ever. Please explain to people listening and watching where we have been, because it was ridiculous. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I got an email from a TV com- a TV show. I won't, I won't give it away yet, because it's, it's going to come coming out soon. And this director, this researcher of this TV show said, Rick, watch your videos. I'd love, you, I'd love to get you involved in a little project, because... Through lockdown, in the middle of Wales, they were they, sorry. I'm telling this the wrong way. 
I'm going to tell the story of the golf course first. Okay. In, a, in an area called Raider, R-H-A-Y-D-E-R, right slap bang in the middle of Wales. In the 1920s, there was a golf course built, a nine-hole golf course built on the side of a hill. And 40 years later, it shut down, mm-hmm. right? And for most golf courses, that would be the end of the story. Yeah. It, it, they tried to build a golf course. It didn't work. It wasn't financially viable. Whatever it was, it shut down 40 years later. Yeah. However, <laughs> there's a number of twists in this story. The biggest twist is that the golf course, again, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Wales, on the side of a hill, one of the most, if not the most, famous golf course designer in the whole of the world that's ever lived designed that golf course. Now, this gentleman, Dr. Alistair McKenzie, has designed 50, 60-odd golf courses around the world. He's actually from Leeds here in the UK. Some of his biggest golf courses that he's done is like Cypress Point, Royal Melbourne, yes. and Augusta National Golf Club. That was in 1920. Or 1934, Augusta was it? Augusta was 1933. You almost forgot Bolton Old Links in 1924. Well, you know what's the mad one? So I was looking at I was looking at his uh, list of golf courses designed, and it's staggering. I it's would, mad. I so wish he was still alive, because I would, honestly, I feel like I'd do a five-hour podcast with him. Because how did he design all these golf courses in such a short period of time? It's ridiculous. All different places around the globe when travel was so hard back then in the 1920s, 30s, etc. What I didn't know is I saw it on the list recently. So the golf course that I kind of semi-knocked about at when I was a junior member, um, a golf course called Regent's Park in Bolton. It was £25 to be a member there as a junior, right? And when I grew up, I actually collected golf balls off the driving range there when I was at through college. I didn't realise that's the golf course he designed exactly after Augusta National, and it's his last golf course he's ever designed. That is madness. And it's just like a, it's like a municipal in Bolton. So anyway, why this particular story was so interesting. Um, so again, this golf course was shut 60 years ago. Yep. Through lockdown, there was a very passionate, very um, enthusiastic golfer by the name of Chris who wanted to quite simply rediscover this golf course like he remembers it briefly when he was a very very young boy riding a pony up on this hill he remember golf being played there so over time over research he spoke to local residents old residents he's used the website is it um lost, lost links? golf lo- got lost golf links i think it was called Which the website a phenomenal website i went on it way. how yeah, good is it it's so cool so basically through trial and error and a thousand hours of hard work cutting back that the bracken that's on this hill which is like really thick kind of gauze yeah, bushes it's, weird, it's not it? nice through trial and error through research he's managed to find all nine original greens and all nine slash 18 original tees when you said at the start it's on the side of a hill i think that is let it, it I can't that's what we thought didn't we, when we got there like a bit of a hill it, it's honest to God, and we'll put if you're listening to this watch the video version on youtube we'll, i got a couple of videos of you hitting some shots we'll put a, a video over this bit now it's literally like a mountain you can't believe there's a golf course never. there never well, mind until, an alston mckenzie one yeah well, until, and then you see it you're actually out there and you're actually hitting golf shots and you and you're starting to see now and again don't be un, under any illusion this is not a golf course in any regards right now yeah like it's very rustic you know, it's this this is a one man band and a bunch of sheep that have that have maintained this yeah. golf course for the, the last sheep literally do cut the grass. Literally eat the grass to cut it. But what Chris has done is cut away all the brack and all the really harsh um kind of um foliage to open up these tees and you can actually see tees that were that were designed by Alistair McKenzie. You can see Mad. fairways, you can see how holes were played and you can see the greens. And again, Alistair McKenzie, if you don't know, was was kind of famous for um like, um, uh, like a tiered green. Tiered green. And again, we speak with Min Woo Lee later in this podcast about the really famous ninth hole at uh, Augusta National. Like that's a perfect Mackenzie green where it's like tiered. Um, and, and anyway, long story short, I, I, I actually end up playing pretty much every hole in the golf course yeah. with him. Uh, again, the greens aren't, you can't put on them. I actually had to put with like a three wood. Well, that was very <laughs> clever because the, the greens are like obviously kind of short, weird grass. So we had a real flag in it. 
it was like an inner tube, like a bicycle tyre, wasn't it? It was yeah. a bit weird. About the size of a foot golf hole. So have you ever seen the videos where Rick plays for a foot golf hole? Similar size to that. And basically, once your ball goes over that kind of line, it's it's classed as in this kind of hole, which is a great way of doing it because you couldn't put on them. No. So you were in like little three-wood bumper runs and drivers. But what was mad, I think, on was it the eighth or ninth hole? I think it was the eighth. We, we hit some tee shots down. And although it's not a golf course, it kind of felt like a golf course. We were looking for balls, and you suddenly you, you go from being on a massive hill to being actually on a golf course. It was class. It was absolutely unbelievable. So um, massive shout-out to Chris. Um, the TV show, well, I'll tell people, it, it was the one show. That actual segment of the show is going to be out in the end of May because Chris has got a charity golf day. And again, if you want to play in it, I'm, I don't know if there's still spots left, and this is not a paid advert or whatever. I just... I like supporting somebody who's mm. so passionate about golf. It was like, awesome. And what's crazy, what's a fantastic story, um, he's, he's had this now rediscovered for the last two years. He's played the golf course four or five times a week <laughs> for two years. So he's played it like 200 times, whatever, in the last in the last two years. No, it, w- it was unreal. And I think maybe we have to head back there one time to an actual video. How good was the scenery as well? Phenomenal. It, it really was. was. So there was two things that came out of it for me is that, you know, it's a shame when golf courses shut down. It's it's obviously sometimes they're not always financially viable, etc. But the other thing was how unbelievable Dr. Alistair McKenzie is. Ridiculous. Like, I can't get, I, I almost can't get over it. I almost want to speak to a relative of his. Mm. I wonder if he has any grandchildren or yeah, sure. great grandchildren. that. I know. think he, was, he lived in America towards the end of his life though, so right. he might be based in the US, but I reckon we could find that. But, I think what was mad about that as well, last thing on this, was when you go to like the old course of St. Andrews or whatever, I'm sure like Presswick or somewhere where golf was really kind of started, you get the feel of the history, but equally the golf courses now, although they are similar in some ways, are so much more manicured and even the things to use on them to maintain them. It's not quite like playing a golf course would have been 200 years ago or whatever. But when we were playing that golf course, or you were playing that golf course, I hit a couple of shots. Like kind of felt like what golf probably would have been like more authentic more maybe yeah even longer ago than when that was built like a few hundred years ago you know the gra- the greens back when tom morris was playing wouldn't be like they are today obviously i bet that was a true reflection imagine playing there with hickory clubs and little like um, feather balls Mad. and the other thing that was quite fascinating because when i when we jumped out of the car and i was like is this, is this for real <laughs> is, is someone winding us up here is this like a, a you being frame moment um but then actually when we started seeing the golf course but under the ground, it was quite rocky, wasn't mm. it? But some of the rocks almost acted as like natural hazards. Yeah, there was no bunkers, just just rocks. It was phenomenal. No, it was Honestly, awesome. Really um, enjoyed it. Really good. I feel like while I was away, you had an easy time because you didn't have to answer a dear Rick. Okay. <laughs> and I know these dear Ricks are what really get you concentrating and thinking. Can I be honest? Go on. I accessed the podcast email address. Great. And didn't realise how long so many of them were. Yeah, well... So, well done, Guy. It's okay. You definitely, you, um, definitely, you definitely earn your bread reading all that. Yeah, we've, we've, <laughs> again, we always love the emails. If you want to send an email in, uh, please do email podcast at rickshields.com. Well, annoyingly, we're getting so much spam, not from people, from like random things like, <sighs> uh, I have a fortune in Nigeria. Please be my prince and marry me. Do you want to be longer? Yes. Off the tee? Yes. Except those type yes. of things. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm actually a bit too long. Off the tee. Um... <laughs> But, oh, by the way, I think I don't, men- I don't know if I mentioned this last time I was here. I can't remember it's been that long. Um, I'm now part of a club. And it was a little bit embarrassing <laughs> to join this club. Now I'm part of this club. I don't think I'm ever going to turn back. The small wiener club. I'm found a member of that. <laughs> <laughs> I am the founder member of that. Um, I am a member of the Seven Wood Society. I oh. own a Seven Wood. Wow. You know what? <laughs> it's a game changer. So I decided to, I've heard there's a bit of a trend now with Seven Woods. I think even Tommy Fleetwood's had one in the bag. A lot of tour, I mean, tour pros, you can't really go with them. trying to make them cool. Yeah. You can't go with a tour pro house because they have basically every club. They just put in what they need for certain tournaments, certain courses, etc. Obviously, when people are paying for golf, you're not going to buy a two iron, a three iron, a seven wood, a five wood, a hybrid, etc., etc. But I got myself a seven wood. I'm a big fan. It goes the distance of a three iron, right? Yep. I can't explain to you how high it goes. It just pops it up. It's so easy to use. But my favourite thing with it is, because there is so much loft on the golf club, you can put a little bit of hands forward, press it down into like a five wood and hit little more bullets out of it. Mm. If anyone wants to join me, get in a seven wood, 
I'll be the leader of this. I might okay. also start using iron head covers as well, oh, just well, to be. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the same kind of criteria. You've, you've got enough head covers in the bag. I have. That's the thing. I've got drive three wood and a seven wood. It's like, it's getting a lot of head covers. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you ready for Dear Rick? Let's do it. So Matt, you're going to have to get ready to beep something here. The title is Dear Rick, I'm shit. <laughs> oh, that was live. That was so good. Well done, Matt. Matt, that was fire. That was actually really good. That was normally the beats going post production. That was literally live. I might, I might, we might actually forgive you for that time you you didn't record the podcast. Yeah. That was like, uh, let's not get carried away. <laughs> this is quite a long email, so I'll try and keep Test it, it again. as short Test as I it can. again. It says, uh, "Dear Rick, I'm shit." <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> it's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, so, right, let me just move my laptop a bit so I can get into this. You ready, Rick? Yeah. Eyes closed. <clears throat> you can see this with your fingers on your temples. Okay. Get ready. Go for it. It says hi. Rick, uh, I've been playing golf for just over a year now. I'm one of the ones who took it up properly after the first lockdown. I played a little bit as a teenager, but that consisted merely of trying to hit the golf ball as far as I could with a crap steel shafted Dunlop driver with mates at the driving range. Okay. 15 years on from that, I've been going to the range semi-regular. I started my first two or three full 18 hole rounds last year with scores in the early 120s. I didn't care about the score at that point. I was just pretty much brand new to the game. That being said, um, seeing little improvements as the rounds got on. So then I went for four or five lessons. Okay, quite a common theme there. Since lessons, uh, I've been up to the range and even to local par three course. Uh, I've seen improvement in distance, accuracy, ball striking, and my swing as well. Great. However, like several other people have listened, have written into the podcast before, the wheels come off at the golf course. I've had one round under 110, and the rest are around similar scores to when I started a year ago, albeit they're getting a little, the course is getting a little bit harder. So he's playing at more challenging courses than he was when he first started. Um, again, and I'm sure like many others, I don't have the time to be at the range two or three times a week or to go for much more than one round a month. I've been lucky that I'm using uh, golf bit of clubs. I've got a few other decent bits of kit as well. Uh, and most of my clubs in the bag are kind of between five and 10 years old. But quite frankly, I feel like I'm starting to pump money into this and not getting any of the rewards. Um, currently, despite ticking the usual mentioned box in the, uh, boxes of practicing as much as I can, as well as getting the golf lessons, I can't see um, when or where the improvements are going to show. I can go out on par or par four, but then in the same round, I can get a 10 on a par three. What's bugging me is golf is like Marmite to me. I'm either obsessed with it or it repulses me. Um, quite often after a rubbish round, I can't even bring myself to watch golf videos on Facebook or YouTube because it angers me so much. Do you, Rick, have any advice on how I can keep the love of the sport up despite pumping what I consider a fair amount of money and time in it without getting any more uh, improvement? And how can I stop getting so frustrated and enjoy it more? Thanks in advance. Wow, that is a good one. Um, any name or anonymous? Or? His name is uh, Anonymous. Okay, so Mr. Anonymous. Um, I, I think from a lot of everything you're saying, you've done everything you should have done. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the one thing that you should give yourself a little bit of relaxation with is you're so new to the game of golf. Like, one year, like, it's not a long time, is it, one no. year? And I think it's very different. A year playing golf when, when probably you and me started as a junior, to trying to do it when you when you're a grown up and you've got grown up issues Point. and cuz that real year is not really a year it's year, like is it? dog years <laughs> yeah. a year for a junior golfer is like, like five or yeah, exactly like seven years for an adult golfer because the amount of time you put into it yeah like if he's a, if you know if he's got a family he's got a job i'm sure he's got commitments like he can't just be swanning off and playing golf five six times a day as, as we're in season five six times a day well <laughs> five six times a week as what like say you and me did and a lot of people who got into golf did when we were younger so i think he's got to give himself a little bit of relaxation there it sounds like he's doing all the right things putting money in the right places getting the equipment if he needs it or get pumping it into lessons it isn't really interesting one i don't know if you know the answer to this when just casual people go and play golf now are they always just playing stroke play all the time I actually feel like I might be wrong, so please comment below or whatever, or email us. I think most people now play Stableford. Yeah. Because I hear people say, I've got 36 points in the day, more than I hear somebody say. Think, yeah. Got, yeah, I do think so. Do you think, do you think, though, people who have played golf for longer than, than less than a year are playing that? Very good point. Because he's not mentioned that, has he? He's no. always put his gross scores. And, and when I think about the times where 
I, I've maybe unlocked my new potential out on the golf course is actually when I've not just played stroke play. Mm. It's when I've played match play yeah. or like doubles match play or, or there's a situation where you're on a hole and you have to get up and down to halve that hole. And like it puts you in a slightly different position. It puts yeah. you in a position where you're thinking, no, I have to do this, otherwise I'm going to lose this hole. You know what, as well? That's a great point because when he said that, he was kind of joking a bit, I think, but I can get a par on a par four. Well, if you would, that might be like three or four Stableford points. Yeah. But that 10 on a par three is the same as like a six. Does yeah. make a difference in, yeah. in Stableford? I, I certainly think for higher handicappers who maybe lack that little bit of consistent early de- uh, consistency early days, playing Stableford, I think, is such an amazing format. Mm. I Again, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'd love to hear people's thoughts. I don't feel like it's super popular in America, Stableford. No, I don't think... Well, I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think it is. I feel like they play just a lot of either match play, straight up matches, yeah. or, or stroke play, normal game of golf. So I think looking looking at other alternative formats that are not just going to mean you have to consi- consistently like write a number down in the box, like as in like a 10 or a 12 if you've had yeah. a bad hole. <clears throat> if you've had a bad hole, don't worry, scrap it off, pick your ball up, move on to the next. And I think as a friendly away to yourself, it's a, such a nicer format mm. to play, isn't it, really? I agree. And certainly if you're a higher handicapper, if you're a brilliant player and you play off single figures, you probably want to get stroke play a lot more because mm. certainly a competition, and this is why a lot of club competitions now do favour stroke play a lot, uh, sorry, stable for a lot more, and they have maybe a monthly medal. That just you showed, didn't it? One month a year they play a medal yeah because it does probably favor the slightly better players it's, it's grueling isn't it medal yeah. like medal or stroke play because anybody can have a bad hole and if even if you're a scratch golfer you can get a six or a seven or an eight yeah. sometimes things happen don't they and it's just like there's nothing worse than playing a medal tournament or stro- whatever stroke play whatever you want to call it and you get onto the first hole and for whatever reason you get like a treble or a quadruple bogey and you're like that's my round yeah, pretty much done so these are my tips for him anonymous I don't think he's doing anything wrong the time off the golf course, but when he's on the golf course, try try three different new formats. Stableford, if he's not done it before, away when you get net par, you make two points, net birdie, you make three points, and if you have anything over a net bogey, it's just nothing. Yep. It's fine. It's, it's a great format. You can play match play against other people. Yep. I do think that's a really, really good... Like I always remember when I was kind of growing up and wanting to get better at golf, I'd, I'd force myself to play match play because I feel like it'd really benefit my stroke play scores late, like the week after because mm-hmm. you're just a bit more adventurous. It's a bit braver format, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like you never feel like you're out of it with match play massively. And it's also just another way of playing. Like, there's nothing worse than just playing one type of golf every time you go and play. It's nice to mix it up. If he plays on his own, the other way you can do it is is bogey golf. Yes. So match match play against the golf course. I'm going to... Because I'm not a member of a golf club, I don't know if that format's really popular very, still. Very, I think that's because it's very yeah. rare. Because I'm sure I've not played it for years. But say if you got like an eagle, let's just say, you only basically still go one up against yeah. the course, don't you? On the flip side, if you get triple bogey, you only get yeah. lose the hole. It's similar to match play. Oh yeah, exactly. Some, some you're literally regards. playing match play against a golf course. So how you play that is is, is if you have a, a net par, the hole is halved. If anything better than net par, you go one up in the match. Yeah. Anything worse than a net par, you, you lose the hole. Yeah. So it's like match play, but against the against the course. And I honestly believe if you if you played these different formats and and it would definitely benefit in the long run your actual stroke play score and he'll find himself shooting under 100 under 100 pretty easily um and, and having more fun with it that was really good advice oh, thank you that felt quite uh sophisticated and it grown up. I, feel, I feel like we should um have like a sub podcast where we can have like relationship questions <laughs> and you can just sit there and talk to them because i think that was really <laughs> beneficial it's because i got bumped on the head now you told me <laughs> you had a story which i don't know yet <laughs> So you said you, were, oh. you told me, so I've got a story that I want to save for the podcast. And I begged you and pleaded you, just tell me, go on, just tell me. And you wouldn't. It might not be that exciting. Uh, last story, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll come on to me and we'll leave. Right. I've got one more thing after okay. that, don't let me forget. Um, when you were away, I decided to take, Cry. take the kids. <laughs> it was Easter Saturday. I thought, I'm going to take the kids, get the, get the kids out of the house. Oh, no, it was Easter Friday, Good Friday. It wasn't so good for me. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Intrigued. Um. We were, having, we were going out to friends. My wife wanted to get ready. The three kids were off school. I was off work, whatever. So I took them to the driving range. Nice. Okay. Thought, if I, if I can't work, I might as well pretend I'm working <laughs> and go to the driving range. So I took the three kids, dead excited, blah, 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 blah. So it was really busy at Trafford. And I, I don't, I'm not a queuer guy. You won't queue at Trafford. I don't queue. 
So I barge in. Of course you like do. I pretend I know people. I could see, uh, don't worry, yeah. I'm just going to go straight in. So I go in with the <laughs> three kids, speak to the boss. He says, go in go in the teaching base. VIP bay. Yeah, don't do not go in these riffraff bays. Yeah, of course. Go in the, go in the teaching bay, yeah. okay? So it's quite exciting for me because that's where I, I kind of started making videos. What's weird though is that not only do you do that, but you then just walk through the American country and grab golf clubs to use. You don't take your own clubs, you start pulling them off the shelf. I'll have a stealth, I'll, I'll have a that, pink. I'll have that. Thank you very <laughs> and much. And then you start hitting Pro V1s <laughs> down the range. It's just weird. I maybe should change my habits on that. <laughs> so I'm in the teaching bay and I'm with the three kids. And, and what I normally do when I'm at the driving range with the kids, certainly for sharing a bay, we'll take turns. So two of the kids sit at the back, one of the kids hitting, and we hit five shots each and swap round. Yep. And everything was going brilliantly. I've witnessed that and it works. Everything was going swimmingly, right? Um, I was in my I was in my old bay. I felt like a golf coach again. I was like, here we are, I'm like teaching. I mean, this is exciting. Um I couldn't I couldn't my login didn't work anymore on the computer though. <sighs> I know. I wanted to see if I had a uh, any emails or anything. What did the kids say when you started talking about angle of attack and smash factor? <laughs> they enjoyed that or not? When I sat them all down, I went, watch me, kids. Do it like this. Do it like this. And they're like, Dad, you grip, your grip's so weak. Why'd you open the... Why'd you fan the face so much? What, what's with the really flippy hand action through the ball? Oh, don't show us chipping, Dad. Bloody hell. I'd rather watch Pete Finch for that. So, um... So anyway, I had, the, I had all the kids go in. There was a couple of other teaching pros in there. The kids were being quiet and very, very well behaved. Okay, like, these are my these are doing really well. I'm thinking I'm going to treat these kids to an ice cream. Like the 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 blitz in it, the mm -hmm. blitz in life, hitting some nice shots, loving life, right? Until the moment. Come on. So <clears throat> I've taught for nearly ten years and taught kids of loads of different ages, loads of adults. Loads of beginners. Mm -hmm. There's not there's one thing that's I know it's happened to a lot of other golf pros, but it's never happened to me. Been hit or hurt by a student. A great punch. He lessons are shit. This isn't working. I'm gonna chin you. Um so I've never had that happen. I've seen it happen. It's it's the common thing. You wield him like shanky ones or something hit them or all oh, like, right. Wow. Like people like swing clubs when they're supposed to. <laughs> okay. There's some great ones on Instagram where you know like you, you, you're like a coach and you're like showing a student about where to where to swing or yeah, how to yeah. hit it. And then suddenly there's like a new golfer kind of goes, All right, but the, the pro is like there still. Yeah. And the and the and the student just swings and whacks the coach. <laughs> so I've never been hit. So at the time my little boy is on the mat. And and I've not disowned him yet, but it's getting close. So I'm putting I to speed the process up a little bit. I for my little boy, I was putting the ball on the tee for him. Okay. So I put my ball put his ball on the tee, wacky shot. Put the ball on the tee, wacky shot, right? On maybe the third or fourth shot, I put the ball on the tee. And to next, he turned round with the golf club, quite accidentally, innocently, lifts the club up and it absolutely Onks me in the head. Oh my god! Like right between the eyes, like literally oh right between days. the eyes. What and and I'm you? like, I'm like stunned. I'm like taken aback. I'm thinking, oh, sh that really hurt. Like that really hurt. I instantly touched my head, and I'm no word of a lie, guy. I'll show you the picture. There was a bump on the side of my head that was absolutely massive. Oh my god! Did like you a, scream? Like a full golf ball lump on my head. <laughs> oh my god! If you want to see that picture, I might share it on Instagram. If not, we'll put it on the we'll put it on the YouTube video. Instantly, I'm thinking, "Oh my god!" Now, luckily, it didn't bleed, right? But I'm thinking, "Oh my but, word!" But then, actually, did some research. I think it might have been better if it did bleed because I feel like that was that was that, all like the blood. Yeah, I feel oh like it was blood god. behind the behind the skin. So I'm thinking, thinking, what the hell do did I do? Did you scream though, or what did you do? I just went, "Oh!" Because there was other coaches yeah. there and stuff. If I, was, if I was at home, I'd have absolutely roasted him. I'd have said. <laughs> how, how dare you? I mean, he's 15. He should know better. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's only three. So uh, I go over to the mirror. I'm looking at the mirror thinking, How the, what do I do here? And bless him. He was he was like, his little eyes were like going. I was like, it wasn't really his fault. But um, he did attack me with a golf club, which I remember for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, so we hit the rest of the shots because the girls wanted to hit the shots. I'm thinking, what am I going to do here? The, the driving range is absolutely Packed. Yeah, Good Friday, everyone's off work. Packed. And I'm thinking, on my walk up here, and it's lovely, fans of the channel stopped me, wanted a quick chat, wanted a picture, whatever whatever else. 
was thinking this is going to be mayhem. I've got this massive lump, so I, I'll get my hat and I'll lower it as far over my eyes as I possibly can. If I'd that cover it then? Not really. I didn't feel like it did to me. <laughs> I felt like I had this. Was it pulsing lump. as well? Yeah, it was really hurt. <laughs> it was really hurting. Um, so I'm thinking I need to get ice on it because it needs to get it needs to go down. So I say bye to the golf coaches, but I'm like, I'm not even looking them in the eye. I'm like, yeah, see you, lads. See you, see you, lads. I'm off. Like, so I come out, literally come out the teaching bay. A lad spots me. Oh, Rick, I watch all your videos. I'm thinking, oh, no, not now. Please, not now. I said, oh, thanks, pal. Really, pr-. And literally my hat is like over my nose at this point. I don't even know. <laughs> it, I don't even know how he recognised me. Uh, must have just been, he must have just seen a beard and a peak of a hat. That's all he could see. So you're trying to get out here as quick as possible. I just like. wanted to get out. I just needed to leave that space. I'm like, getting the kids. Was it more the fact you had a massive bump on your head or the fact you had to say that your son hit you with a golf club that was embarrassing? It was a bit, it was a bit of both, really. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of both. I, I thought, I thought... <sighs> And, and instantly, honestly, I, I thought to myself, no way I'm telling this on the podcast. There's no way I'm, I'm so telling this story are. on the podcast. I'm so, Is that one of your first thoughts? I'm so embarrassed. Was that within the first five minutes you thought that? Yeah. And then I thought also, Great. I hope nobody's going to see me because then they're going to say, Why didn't you, what about that massive bump on your head on the <laughs> podcast? So anyway, I managed to navigate my way down to the little cafe, went to the cafe, asked, asked the woman behind, can I have an ice pack? And at this point, I like lifted my head up and her, and her eyes like... Her eyes like bulge, like <laughs> oh my goodness! There's like. a unicorn here. <laughs> 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 so so she runs in the back like emergency. I'm surprised you didn't pull like the emergency call. <laughs> Everyone like, stops it in balls <laughs> and looks at you. <laughs> Heli air, air ambulance flies down onto the driving range. Local golf pro and YouTuber shuts down driving. We've range. had a 250 cc driver to the head. <laughs> So yeah, so she gets me a little ice pack, like one of these breakup ones. I'm putting it on my head. And I'm thinking, God, how, how am I going to get this? Is horrendous. that was quite bold that you actually went to the cafe in the first place. I think place, I needed though. to because I knew because I was going out with friends that afternoon, right? Ah, you're thinking damage limitation. I think it, ice it. Well, I'm speaking to my wife, going, I'm not going. No, I'm not, I'm not going. <laughs> That's so. Funny. I'm not going tonight. I've got this bloody massive lump on me. No, I'm not going. So um, I got this ice pack, put it on, and as I'm walking out, and I'd like to apologise to one particular individual and I've never done this in my whole life ever as I was coming out of the cafe this this fella had spotted me going in and he, he kind of hung around till I came back out he's a fan of the channel mm-hmm. fan of the podcast thank you whoever you were thank you so much and he and he came and said Rick Rick uh, love your videos can I get a picture now normally with a bit of a fee involved yeah. I, I'll say yes 50p it is 50p a picture I remember you were 25 back in the day I'll say yes you can have a picture sir just please Please call me Lord Shields and you can do not picture. touch me. <laughs> Don't look at me directly in the eye. And I, and I need to vet every picture you take. Yes. Jokes, by the way. So, jokes. <laughs> so, he, came, he walked the picture and I was like, oh, I really can't have a Didn't say now. no. Like, I said no. Oh. I, said, I said, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. And and he was the only guy. Because I thought if he asked, it was a real. Oh, did you, you ask near ex- the reception? Yes. Near the reception bit. If he asked. Oh, there'd be like, loads of women coming over, it, swarming. It, you know, it would have been like one direction, yeah, 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 one yeah. direction, you know. And, and I'm, I'm not here for that. No. I'm, I'm, I'm there for a quiet day at the Traffic Centre. It's the fact that you walk into the Traffic Centre Ranger with the hat says, I am Rick Shields on it. You're going to get it. If you're wearing that hat, it says, yes, it's me. It's, and then the fact that you were your United top with Shields number one on the back, then you're going to get stopped. Yeah, I'm, and I'm going, hi guys, welcome down to Trafford Golf Centre. Hi kids, welcome back to Trafford Golf Centre. <laughs> Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, no, at that point I thought if, if somebody potentially spot, it was really busy, I thought this is not going to be the only picture. So I, I kind of lifted my peak of my hat up and again, eyes like... Have like you got thick. a bit of a bruise now yeah, still? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh my word, I can <clears> see it in the light. So, because I've worn a hat <laughs> o- over my eyes for the last five days. So I come out... Or, yeah, so I come out and like it's massive. So I have to say no to him. I come out and I come down the stairs, and the the queue up the stairs are huge. So very different scenario to when I was walking up the stairs, skipping VIP lane. Yeah. Mate. I'm now walking down the stairs like a like a little lost puppy. Well, what's weird is people often see you walking out of Trafford Golf Centre in tears because I beat you at long <laughs> drive, but it's very rare to see you in tears with a massive bum on your head. <laughs> So, yeah, so anyway, long story short, I was true to my word. I did buy the kids ice cream still. Yep. And as they sat on the steps where near the end of the driving range, I sat in my car feeling sorry for myself with this ice pack on my head. And luckily, luckily, I got there quick enough. I got home, put peas on it, I bag of peas. Luckily that evening, we'd been at the party for an hour and a half and nobody said anything. 
So I kind of brought it up. I said, has no one but seen this massive lump on my head? But it, I think it was just a lot bigger in my mind than it actually was. Yeah. That's the story. What a fall from grace. So I've never taken that little sod again. No, I'm joking. Well, that was good. It was my, it was my fault. I could, I could, that was such a good storytelling. I was there with you. Um, but What's one last, one last thing before we come on to this amazing podcast with um, Min Wu is that this is Tuesday. This is going to be out in, th- what, three days' time? So Friday... Break 75, season two, is back. Drum roll, please, Matt. Oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, that was quite good. It was a perfect time, then. That was really clever, that. How did... I don't know. I think that's just a fluke. No, because you just literally got guys... I said beat. Christ. It wasn't the worst word in the world. It's not really a swear word. We beeped it. Anyway, yes. Um, yeah, Break 75 is back. 29th of April, 4 p.m., yeah. Yeah. For, <laughs> I thought you were checking the date then. No, no, I was checking the date, but yeah, you're right. For many, many weeks, we've not come up with a t- uh, how many I'm going to do yet until it, until golf destroys me. I'm actually going to play stable. Episodes, I'm going to play stable for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get 36 points? That would be actually quite good. Um, yeah, so the first one is up in Scotland. I won't give it away. It's already been filmed. Uh, in fact, we filmed a couple already in advance. They're going to be coming out every Friday. 4 p.m. and they are bigger, they are better, and they are even bigger scores. More. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't get me right. Then, 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 than ever before. No, you know what? Jokes <laughs> aside, the, we've what the first episode is obviously fully edited and ready to go. And I'm not just saying this; it's one of my favourites. I think um, last year had a great reception, which we were very, very thankful for. Cause it was great people seeing you on the golf course, having a laugh, showing good shots, showing bad shots. Again, both which happened in the episode so far. That is golf. Um, and I think one of the, the very intro of the first episode, without spoiling anything, you kind of say this line to camera, where, you know, like I want to break 75 because I don't claim to be the best golfer in the world, and, it, and it's very real. And I think that's what people will really like with this series and the golf courses you've got planned as well. Um, I am excited. Some crackers, and you join me for the first two episodes. Yes, and there's a couple of episodes you definitely want to join 100% me. Hundred percent, I want to join you on a couple of them. So, um, so yeah, exciting times. Right from me trying to break seventy five around all the different random golf courses in the UK to this interview now with the forty ninth best player in the world who has just shot thirty for the front nine at Augusta National on a Sunday. Bad. Min Woo Lee, honestly, this chat, is, it's about an hour long. It's absolutely brilliant. Yes. It's brilliant. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Again, apologise a little bit about the fan noise, but nothing much we can do. Uh, sit back, enjoy. It, yeah. And, and we'll definitely have him on again near the open. Love to. Guy, great to have you back. Thanks. And we'll see everyone next week. See you soon, guys. Live from Australia, Min Woo Lee. Min, thank you yes. for coming back on. I feel... Yeah, I know. I feel a lot's changed since back in... Was it was it June last year or May last year? It was year? end of May, I think it was. I yeah. feel like y- your whole life has flipped around and, and you are just a baller. <laughs> like, you are just <laughs> balling it now. Yeah, um... Obviously, things have been pretty good since after the after the podcast and the video we've done. Um, and yeah, I got a. There's a lot of hard work, but there might be a little good juju from you. So, <laughs> thanks very much to the Rick Shields podcast and the fans out there. Um, no, it's been awesome. Um, obviously, played very good uh, at the Scottish Open and won. That was probably the biggest highlight, and then. I just played the Masters, which was another, you know, big step um, forward. And no, it was it was an unbelievable experience. And um, yeah, happy with the way golf has uh, gone since then. You just live in the dream, aren't you? Right now, like you, <laughs> you're still twenty three year old. Yeah, twenty three. <laughs> twenty three, travel in the world. You've already won on tour. You've just played in the Masters. You've just, by the way, tied the front nine course record at the Masters yeah. on a Sunday. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the hell? I know, I know. Um, 
obviously I was a little disappointed on my back nine because the front nine was going so well and I think it crept into the top five after the ninth hole and um, it came came really quick. You know, I, I was just feeling it, made a lot of birdies, hit it good shots, um, some good breaks and, you know, capitalize. And then um, at the end of the round, I was like, I was, uh, you know, a bit disappointed that it finished that way. But then, you know, you got to just think of the positives and because that was probably the only like kind of downfall. I had four bogeys in a row, but there were, I mean, there were actually really good bogeys. Um, I'll take those bogeys, you know, it could have been a lot worse, um, but it was, it was an amazing experience and yeah, it just happened so quick. I, I am pretty proud of that front nine record because it was my first time and um, a lot of other people have played there plenty of times. So it was an amazing um, achievement, I guess. It was ridiculous. Right, I, I really want to rewind time a little bit, okay, because I, I want to come on to this story of obviously Sunday and everything else. Can you first tell me when you received the invite? Because you got in, you had to be in the top 50 in the world to get in, didn't you? And you were 49th in the world at the end of last yeah, year. Yeah, so so I, after the last tournament of the year in um, Abu Dhabi, I I came, I want to say, 16th there. And um, I knew I needed to play decent there to get into the top 50. But it was only, I mean, I was only, I came fourth the week before. So I was, there was no talk about top 50 talk, nothing about that. And after the fourth, I'm like, people started saying, hey, you know, one good tournament, you can get into the Masters. And um, being that top 50 at the end of the year. So I was like, Oh, okay. I mean, that kind of put a little bit of pressure on myself because, you know, I was just vibing out there and just playing really good golf, which I enjoyed. I didn't have any, any, you know, pressures and I just, you know, was hitting it so well. So I was just enjoying it. But um, yeah, I didn't putt that well at the very end of the year at that tournament. And, you know, on the, it was actually a cool story on the last hole. I smoked my drive, waved my hands up in the air. I'm like, oh my God, this is the last shot, last drive of the year and I was so excited to just be off the course because I played two weeks in a row and I mean maybe three and I was just like so get ready to go home and quarantine which is was not exciting but I was excited to get home um so I've smoked this drive and I've had I have a seven iron into the last hole and if people know it's a pretty difficult par five um over water and I've blocked this seven iron so far right worst shot of the week into the bunker and um I managed to hit it to, you know, a foot and then hold it. But um, the story, the funny story was my caddy at the time, Bill, he um, he was saying to me or saying to my playing partners, Jason Scrivener and his caddy Rance, like, if he doesn't make birdie, we're not going to get into the top 50. So at the end of it, Jason, like, after we shake our hand, Jason goes, I think you just made it in the top 50. Good job. Here's... Uh, <laughs> The no nice birdie, way. Um, and hopefully you get it. So then, a couple of weeks later, uh, which was probably maybe December, mid December, um, I didn't play a tournament. Um, there was a South African event, and I could have played. I could have played those tournaments if I didn't get into the top fifty. But um, there's a guy on. Um, there's a guru guy on Twitter, and he uh, he knows all the calculations on um, on the rankings and all that. So uh, he said that. I should be in the top 50. I was 49th, 50th. So, I mean, if then, I didn't make birdie on the last hole, it would have been a kick in the teeth because, I mean, I hit it unbelievable that week and just putted so bad. So, I was like, oh, I just had to make one more putt or something like that. So, um, it was a really cool, um, I guess, it was just a, it was just a good <laughs> achievement. Um, and then I got the letter. I didn't actually get the letter. My uh, letter came to my manager in America um so when i got to america maybe january february i got to see the actual card which was really sick um but yeah I, so, I, so explain we, we knew a couple of weeks before the end of the year explain to people listening and watching because normally it normally happens towards the end of the year or early the, the this year you get the invite through the post <clears throat> explain to everyone kind of how that looks like it, it's quite subtle so, isn't it yeah, so I mean, at the you get top fifty. I mean, in America, I'm sure postage is real quick. But I live, you know, on the other side of the world. So, uh, especially and then with COVID happening, so I knew 
Oh, I, I think I left on the 4th of January to another tournament in Australia. So I wasn't going to be home. Um, so I think my manager did the right thing and said, oh, it's going to come over to his house in Florida. Um, but I was, you know, I was a, the people that are already in got their letters. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get my letter soon. But I mean, it came to the 2nd to 3rd January and I was like, well, my letter's not here. Um, so I think they had to make sure that I was actually top 50 by, you know, some people knew already like me, but you know, the tournament's not going to give out a letter and you you end up being 51, you know, that looks not good for them. So, um, no, I was just, uh, you know, I got it and it was sick. It was just like this little envelope comes out with like, I, I'm sure they, I don't know if they write it or it's printed, but it, it looks so Personalized. written, but so professionally. Yeah, literally perfect with, um, you know, it doesn't say 20, 20, it doesn't say 2022. It's all in letters and it looks sick. So, um, yeah, I'm going to frame that one and keep it. <laughs> That's incredible. So, so do you then, do you have to almost accept the invite or is it a given? Like, do you have to actually like yeah. message someone back yeah. or email somebody? Yeah. So you get like a link and you, you pretty much just click yes. So it is, it's pretty, it's weird. It's like, obviously you're going to play, but, um, yeah, it's just a, I mean, I think it's just an official thing. You just get it. So, <laughs> so um, and get the link and you just press yes. <laughs> so you're in, you're playing in the Masters. Obviously, you, you've got two or three months to prepare. I don't want to get kind of too geeky. Did, did you change much in your preparation or did you just keep, as you mentioned, just keep vibing? Did you just think, I'm just, well, I, I, you know the golf course, surely, because obviously you've seen it so many times on TV. Like, did you do anything yeah. really different in the build up to the Masters? Yeah, so we, I'm pretty sure you get to go to the Augusta as many times as you want uh, beforehand. Wow. So I got to go, I got <laughs> to go, uh, I've, there was a week off. So I went, um, I flew down in the morning, played the afternoon, played the morning the next day and then flew back to Orlando. So um, I got to play twice beforehand and obviously that's different to a normal tournament. You don't really play a practice round before the week. So, um, I mean, it's one of the courses where you need to practice or else it's, you know, you're going to be way behind because slopes, everything around, you just you just need to get ready for that course. Wow. So, just, just a quick one, touching on the slopes. Obviously, you've played clearly at Augusta and Rick's been to watch the golf. Everybody says how slopey it is now, hilly, but on TV, you can't really see it. How mm. slopey actually is it, Minwoo? It's just, I don't know, like, it's it's so slopey. It's I can't explain it. There's a lot of holes that are down and up, and you know the tenth hole goes straight down, right to left. You gotta you can hit a snap hook off the tee and actually be fine. Um, so it's there are a lot of hills. You know I I think I finished my Saturday round early. I was second group off, and I had lunch, and I was watching it on TV, and I'm like, it looks so different on TV. It looks like a flat chip, but it's not. It's, you know, you got to like literally place it on the dime and then let it just trickle down the slope. So it's, it's completely, it's completely different to what people see. Um, but it's, it's, it is, it is an awesome experience because there's some holes that are just in the, just in, on the fairway and it like the ninth hole is just grass and it's just one green on the just middle of nowhere. So it, it's pretty cool. Would you say it's the hardest course you've played? Hardest? Mm. Oh, I think Bay Hill this year was unbelievably hard. It was, I think Scotty shot five under or something, but I mean, the grass was a foot deep and the greens were so firm. Like I was just not ready for it. Just Monday, Tuesday practice round was kind of soft and it was okay. And then you get into tournament and you're like, your, your putter doesn't even sit on the ground. It, slides when you because it's so burnt greens, out the so greens were so it fast. was a really it was a really big surprise to me and there's a, i mean these courses are tough out here so when when you very first played it so this was a couple of weeks before the actual masters like did you did you go on your own did you go with can, i'm guessing you can't just take anybody with you can you, you gotta... yeah no so you if you play with a member you can bring you know, three other people in the group. So a lot of people bring like play with a member and bring their dad or bring their family. No way. And, um, and we didn't have a member. So we, you could use a professional caddy from Augusta. So, uh, I play with myself and Lucas Herbert and he had, you know, we both had our own Augusta caddies and, uh, you're allowed to bring one guest. 
So my coach was with me at the time and he came over and, um, you know, we got to see the course together. And when you played for the first time, did you actually go out for score or was it a bit of a knockabout? Uh, it was a knockabout because there's a lot of, I mean, most of the whole, I mean, most of the holes you got to play to, you know, the left side of the green or the right side of the green because that's a Sunday pin or that's a Saturday pin. So um, you had to mix it up. You can't just play there because it's literally like you just got to know your slopes. I mean, I had I had a caddy, Brian, out there and he just gave me so much information. I had to write everything down because I couldn't put it all into my head. It was literally you cannot miss it here or else you're going to three pot or you can't make an up and down because it's so fast. And some chips and some holes out there are just impossible to make up and down so you just need to know and, and did you have to re- i'm guessing you had to relay that then all back to your actual caddy for tournament week as well yeah exactly um i, I got a new caddy and he's been there a couple of times so um so he oh, that's good. Knew, so it wasn't it wasn't his first knew. time hmm? it wasn't his first time it wasn't your new caddy's first time was it yeah, no, no, he's been there a couple of times, so he knew um, he knew around. But you know, after you go there like once or twice, you know, you know, kind of the gist of it, and you kind of know. You you got the hang of it. What? Yeah. Um, so so let's now fast forward a little bit of time. It's Masters Week. Like, what what day did you arrive? Are you, are you there like super early? Because obviously the tournament starts um, on Thursday. Did you play in the par three? I got. Par three on the yeah, Wednesday? Yeah, I played the par three. Yeah, I'll, I played I'll, the par three. My I'll sister caddied. I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, come on to that in a minute. Let me save that. So when did you actually yeah. arrive? What was the first day you actually got I there? arrived on Sunday night at like 11 o'clock um, because we came, we had a we had a plane from Valero, Texas open and we came over. So um, that was the, yeah, that night, that night. And then we just went out early, to, early on Monday. And let's say that Monday, practice round, you're getting a bit of, practicing is that mike is that yours what's um what's your mind yeah sure. sorry wait give me a second give me a second i was feeling cold now i'm like real hot <laughs> what uh, i'm still getting some that's good what were your what were your honest expectation levels so on that monday masters tournament week what were your what were your goals and expectations um i i mean i got so many interviews and i just said i'm gonna have fun this is people put so much pressure on themselves i play with scotty in the practice round and they all say just just go out and play this so, so many people go out there the first time and say oh you need to do this you need to do that but you just go out there and play i mean who cares if you you're gonna hit. You're gonna have bad shots. You're gonna have bad parts. It's the Masters, you know. It's there's literally the most people I've ever seen on a golf course, and you know you're gonna be nervous. So you know you literally just have to go out there and play golf. Love it. You know what? This is an obvious thing to say, but every year when the Masters comes around, it actually makes you realize how big an event it actually is. The coverage it gets over here. All my friends were kind of yeah. very casual golfers are watching it, texting me saying who should have bet on. It really does like get people excited, doesn't it? And it's that thing. It's the first major yep. of the year, the first massive, massive tournament for the casuals. You and, must and, feel there's a lot of eyeballs on you. And, and I think the casual, because it's at the same venue every time, yeah. they, they can they can easily get infested with it a little bit more as well because they've seen Augusta for many years. Exactly. It, it is such a huge event. Yeah, it's it's just so fun. I mean, I mean, I I think if I had to choose an event to win or a major to win i think i'll say the masters but i mean any major would be fine but um for me growing up it was the masters um playing in europe a bit more uh i've kind of sided towards the open but my gut feeling is the masters you know that's that's the biggest <laughs> you know you want that green jacket and you work hard to get there of course so wednesday and by the way i 100 percent think you will Without question, the the the, the golf you sh- showed on Saturday, Sunday morning was just a joke. Um, Wednesday, you're playing in the par three tournament. Was that the first time you played the par three course, or did you pre- did you play that beforehand? No, first time. So oh, it's so cool. I mean, I did not know anything about this course. Um, the longest club I took was an eight iron. Everyone said that I didn't hit the eight iron. I think I hit 
nine iron maybe, but it was usually wedge or under. And I mean, these greens, it was kind of not bad, but the greens were real slow because they were so slopey. I mean, you're spinning. You've seen it. You, I mean, yeah, everyone yeah. has seen it. You, you hit it 20 feet past and it comes back all the way down. You know, what, what hole, what course does that? So it's real slopey. The greens are not as fast or, or not fast at all um, because of that reason. So you don't want to, you don't want to putt too much and put too much consideration because the next day you're putting on glass. So yeah. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of just, you know, you just have to play. You just get, get it. You know, you just have to do it. It's your first year doing it. Um, I mean, I play with Mackenzie Hughes. He had his, he had his kids out. It was so cute. You know, every hole he would hold like a one footer and everyone would go crazy, you know, um, oh, yeah. but it, it would be a special experience, you know, um, if you had if you had people with you, um, but it's so it's so special. I mean, there was so many people, and like two meters off the green, and there's people, and you're like, what? Um, you got to hit good wedge shots, or else you're hitting someone. <laughs> well, who was it that hit one into the crowd? And it, 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 it might have even been like Scotty Scheffler. Somebody hit one, and the actual guy in the crowd caught and just threw it onto the green. Yeah, and nearly held it. Yeah, yeah exactly. they literally sat so close. I nearly held it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I yeah, saw a so stat, Minwoo, that. You were the first person ever whose caddy had a higher world ranking than the player. Yeah, probably. I mean, that was so cool. Yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, Minji was on the bag, and my sister, and no, it was a very cool, very cool experience. Um, and it, I don't it, know if she liked the caddying part yeah, for her brother, but she liked the experience. There was a lot of people, and she got to hit two shots, um, hole eight and hole nine, and she, I mean, hole eight, she hit it to ten feet with like a nine iron and then she hit she hit it pretty close on on nine two so i mean it was it was a very cool experience oh that's amazing and, and was she was she absolutely odds on that she was going to caddy for you like had she reserved this for many years beforehand <laughs> no or did you ask no her actually or? actually mum was supposed to caddy for me um well she wanted to caddy for me she's like i'm gonna as soon as i got in and then closer to the date minji's like no i'm gonna caddy so she <laughs> took the throne <laughs> um, but did maybe you, did in your mom, years coming did your mum walk sh- around uh mum and dad walked around yeah yeah, yeah. mum and dad walked around so uh, the whole uh, the whole family was out there which was really cool um it's like my first time having both parents out at a golf tournament since i've turned pro so wow. it was a very special experience that's yeah. amazing it is what we talk a lot about the open or the masters which is better and they're, they're both so so different aren't they for different reasons and i can't wait this year for the 150th at saint andrews but you have to say when you see the players with the families at that par three in particular, it does it does feel special. Like Tommy with his little boy Frankie and the pictures they got and stuff, it does look yeah. awesome for the families and friends. Yeah, I mean, no other tournament does it, and it's just such a special tradition, I guess. And you know, you have your family out, and it's even more special. And there's just so many. There's literally it's full. Like the whole whole par three course is full. So it's it's just a awesome experience i must admit I, so i went in 2018 to the masters and i went on the sunday and it was amazing atmosphere unbelievable got to see tiger hitting and, and just as you mentioned saw that slope on 10 down the hill so so many things that you just do not see on tv but i also so wish i'd gone on like the wednesday because mm. i do really think the wednesday is one of the best days for a spectator because you because yeah. you still get a bit of practice i mean the, i'm guessing players are still playing the real course in practice yeah. rounds as well mm. aren't they but then you've got the par yeah. three tournament you can still take your phone you can still take pictures and videos like where on the tournament days obviously no that's phones. not allowed oh you no can't phones. you can't do phones on wednesday no, only players can have phones on grounds but you can ah. bring your camera and your yeah and your video videography camera so phones aren't even allowed on the monday tuesday no no ah. no monday tuesday wednesday only only cameras and then after t- and then tournament days no cameras nothing ah but you're you you're except the players players are allowed nice yeah. nice but w- i mean yeah we we still get told that we're not allowed to we shouldn't we shouldn't have it out in public um but when we're like at our cars or something and in a private area we can do do you get quite a detailed list of do's and don'ts? Uh, nah, those are probably the mo- the main thing. You know, I think I think the spectators can't run, they can't you know shout, or else they're kicked out. And they're pretty strict. I've heard from the players; they have been pretty strict. And if you do something wrong, you're out. So 
um, I guess that's why Augusta is so good because it's very polite and obviously the Open, they have such polite crowds and respectful and they know golf uh, really well. And I mean, same as the Masters, it's it's just a really cool, I think any any golfer or any human that likes golf has to go there. So if they can find a ticket, yeah. of course, yeah, that's not that's not that's not the easy bit. Um, yeah. So Thursday, mo- Thursday, what time did you tee off on the first day? Was it morning time? Uh, yeah, it was mid morning. So, um, like my coach has been there before eight years ago, and he was like, "Make sure you just hopefully you're not near Tiger because it's a joke. It's literally a joke. There's it's eight people deep, and you just you just can't did you, move around. Did you see any of the Tiger Mania? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was actually fortunate enough to, you know, I was putting on the putting green next to the first, first tee and Tiger comes and then like, it was like one, probably one person field around the green. And then it was like five, six. And I'm just like, holy, like I can't miss a putt. I actually can't (laughs) miss a putt. (laughs) Um, there's just eyes on you, just eyes. And obviously they're there for Tiger, but I mean, when he's not doing anything, he's, I mean, it was just me, JT and Tiger. So it was like three people and if they're not putting that i mean they're looking at me and i'm just like oh i'm my nearly crap in my pants so it's yeah it's a it's different when that many people have eyes on you you know i've you know you have the crowd that looks at you and cheers you on but when there's hundreds of people around one little putting green then it's a bit different <laughs> that's crazy so thursday i mean obvious question I'm guessing you're pretty nervous at this point, playing on Thursday morning. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Not. I think the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday helped me a lot because just in the practice round, there was nearly more people right there uh, with you because they're there to watch all the players go through. But when there's when the tournament comes around, it's like people watch want to watch Tiger or people want to watch the Scotties and the best players in the world. So it was nearly smaller in a way um no compared way. to the practice rounds which is strange but i think that helped me a lot because uh, as soon as you step foot on augusta you're like holy there's so many people like it's just it, it was absolutely crazy um i can't describe it to you it's just you just got to be there it's it's just crazy so by by thursday you're kind of getting into your, your role a little bit and you're probably you're probably not as nervous as you were in the start of the week um yeah and yeah then- so I was, I was i was enjoying it i was like this is cool First tee, you obviously see no the first tee. It's just maybe like eight meters wide, ten meters wide, and then just people lined up, and <laughs> it's so cool. It's just so cool. Um, and you just need a striped one. <laughs> you just need to hit a good one. <laughs> I'd, have been, I'd have been taking people out. I'd have been, I'd have been shouting <laughs> for constantly. You know, I always think it's mad about the first tee, like how understated the announcement is, isn't it? Don't they say like four, please? Now driving, Minwoo Lee. It's just like really quick, really yeah. short, and just understated, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's usually there's like the speech, and then and then the clap, but then it's like four, please, and then now driving, and then people just kind of start clapping, and it's just it's such a cool, it's so cool. Um, the crowds, you know, it's not that big of a loud clap, but it's just like good enough to be respected and be come on let's go this is the first tee let's have a good one um and it's just yeah it's just cool you need to you're nervous on the first tee. first hole is not that not that easy you need to hit a good drive and then a good iron shot or else um if you miss it in the wrong spot you're not making par or birdie so it's just it's pretty slopey too so fast forward your first two rounds and, yeah. you, and you make the cut like yeah first off that's an incredible achievement for a first timer mm-hmm. you must have been you must have been pretty buzzing at that point at yeah. that point, you mentioned as so far you were having fun and that's all you were going for. At that point, does your goals change? Okay, uh, rewind back. Rewind back. Funny story. Um, I was playing. Um, it was pretty tough. I didn't know what the cut was. I didn't know what the... Because there's no, there's no scoreboards out there that have cut line at four over or five over. It was just the leader's. So you you have no clue what the goal is and you're just out there. And then silly me, I thought, you know, back in the days they had a 10-shot rule from the leader. So I was like, um, I don't know who was leading at the time, but I'm like, oh, I'm inside the 10-shot 
10 shot cut. So if you were 10 shots um, in between, well, 10 shots behind the leader, you're going to miss the cut, even so, if it's outside the top 55 or top so, 50. So for example, if the leader was level par and you're yep. nine over, you're in. That wasn't, yeah, that wasn't rude. Yeah. So where they if, got where, rid of that in 2019, <laughs> but you didn't know. I just, <laughs> I didn't know. And I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good, man. Like, it's all good. So um, if I knew, I mean, I had to make bir- one, I had to make one under from the last four holes and I managed to do that. But I think if I knew, if I knew that the cut was going to be four over, I was probably, I mean, I don't know, I would have been pretty nervous, but I was like, to my caddy i was like hey i should be fine with the cut and he said um i think five might get in four is probably definitely getting in so i was four over going up the last hole and that's not an easy drive i smoked my drive best drive of the day um and then hit it to like 12 feet and i was you know happy days but i still didn't know until i signed my scorecard and until day's end because it was just creeping it was just creeping right there so i think it was like tied 44th to 46th so i was it was getting close wow so yeah. you're, you're in you kind of sneak in but you deserve it you obviously had two good rounds yeah. or you know you were you were right in there I mentioned then do your goals change do you start thinking right can i get up this leaderboard do you start thinking where's my score in relation to tiger is there any chance <laughs> i can get out with tiger like does anything change then after that friday evening um not really. Uh, we just knew it was going to be cold. So it was like normal 15, 20 degrees, maybe 20 degrees first two days. It was a bit rainy on the first few days. And then and then Saturday comes and it's literally like four or five degrees in the morning. So like you're shivering, you're like, you got this big puffer jacket on and so different, so different to the first two days. And you're just like, you're not even thinking about the score. You're just like, hit your shot as good as you can and then stay warm. It was so cold and different. And fast forward, I ended up shooting level par and the scoring average was 77 or something on that day. So I moved up from, from last after making the cut to 20, 25 or 26. So I moved up 20 spots just from shooting at level par and I was in there warm uh, after after the round I was in, I was having lunch warm watching TV and people were just making bogeys and you know you feel for them because it was windy as well and you're like yeah you know you dealt with it but it, it did get very tough. <laughs> and at that point I are you like looking out for when ta- where Tiger's score is? Yeah. Yeah, dad was on his phone. Oh, dad was on my phone looking at the scoreboard and he's like, Oh, he was, I think I was four over and he was like two, three over with like nine to play or something. And then ended up, I don't know, seven over or something, but we were looking close and we're like, Oh, it could be cool. I was like, Oh, I don't know if I want to play with him. I'd be pretty nervous. But, um, I also love, you know, love the crowd and love playing in front of people and having that sort of pressure. So, um, I was like, whatever, whatever floats the boat and I'll, just try to play as good as I can. That would have been that would have been mental. That would have been absolutely crazy. So final day, moving into the Sunday, you are you say you were about twentieth on the leaderboard, roughly. Yeah, twenty fifth, twenty fifth, around twenty fifth. Again, I'm gonna ask the question, does the goal change? Does anything change at that point? Um, well, Scotty was, I don't know, so far ahead, so I wasn't really thinking about winning, but obviously you want to do the best you can and um, my coach just said, you know, go out and have fun. Make, you know, start off really well because the first six holes, if you're level par, I think it's a pretty good score. Um, it's obviously, uh, other than the second hole and the third hole, I mean, it's tough. You know, you got a four iron, three iron into four and then you got a driver and could be a six iron into the wind on five and then you got that se- uh, sixth hole. So, I mean, um, just go out there and have fun and I was... I think I, I mean, I mean, I made eagle on two, and I was, you know, off hot and running, so it was good. What do you get for that, by the way? Don't you get, don't you get a? Uh, yeah, the so they say crystals. They say you get crystals. So I'm not really sure. They're going to send it to my house. So when that comes, I'll show you. But I think it might be glasses. Kind of like I saw it on Twitter somewhere, but I'm not sure what the real thing is. It's like just like a normal glass with eagle on it. And it has, uh, I think, a Masters logo. So 
I mean, that's not many people cool. so sick. have that, so that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> that's quite cool. And then again, just like an admin thing, right? Does someone email you after and go, "Oh, by the way, congratulations, you got an e- <laughs> you got an eagle." Where do we, where do where do you want to be sent your prize? No. So at the beginning of the week, you register, and um, and they say like, "There's like a little little. There's like a full page of oh, if you ha- have a trophy or have like a bonus." item where would you like a sent so send it uh, home <laughs> oh, that's clever I, I didn't i'm glad yeah. i asked that question then so yeah you start unbelievable you obviously went par eagle and then didn't you have a couple of pars and then you just went on a ridiculous birdie run you had four, yeah four so to finish the front nine yeah so i um i made a 10 footer for par on one hit my eight iron. i smoked this drive by the way smoked it I don't know, probably one of the longest of the week. And I have eight iron into two, which is not normal. You know, you have like a hybrid or a four iron into that. And I've got eight iron, flushed it, hit it to like three, four feet, hold the putt, par on the next. Um, and then four, hit a really good shot, uh, hit it to like 25 feet past the hole. But anywhere on that green, on the right spot, you're doing good. And, and I made a really good par on nearly hold my chip on six, uh, five. And then on six, I, Oh, it was funny. I hit, I hit the biggest flub of my life. I reckon. Oh, not the biggest flub of my life, but a flub, on, a flub, a flub on, a flub on, uh, six. And I'm like, please, I, I don't, they didn't get on camera, but I said, please be the best flub of your life. Cause <laughs> I clubbed up a little bit and we wanted to be aggressive because if you go short of that hill, you're going all the way down and is this I made pin, double on the first where, hole. Is this where the pins back? Right. Yeah. Back. Right. So it's further back than the first day. The first day I hit a little right and made double bogey cause I chipped it up, went down. So, uh, we learned our lesson and said, let's be aggressive. If you have a chip from the back of the green, it's not too bad. It's quite flat. Um, with a bit of downslope, and I flubbed it, flub hit hit it high off the face, and hit it to seven feet, and I'm like, yeah, no good job. <laughs> but I, I hit this, and I'm like, be the best flub of your life, and it's just gone plonk straight next to the pin, and oh went to seven my feet. God. So you're not that in. Yeah. You birded seven, which doesn't. It, just a quick one before we get into that. What do you actually think the hardest hole in the golf course is? Eleven. For Com- me, comfortably, yeah, eleven, yeah. eleven is just tough. I mean, I think it did play the toughest. You, you've got to hit this. You've got to hit this really good drive. Um, usually plays into the wind, and then you've got. I mean, I had four iron into the last day, and there's water left, obviously, uh, of the hole. And then there's they changed the green um, compared to the last few years. They've made it a bit more, bit more severe going up to the green. So, I mean. I think I had two chips from on that side and obviously you don't want to hit it too far because you're going to go in the water. So I've I've left it in the fairway still. Like I didn't get to the green. So 11's got to be the toughest hole for me. Yeah, um, but we can talk about we can talk about 10's a weird hole. It's There's a little tunnel there that it's hard to hit your iron shot. Um, 12 is obviously... 12 is one of the harder holes as well. It's not... It's weird. It's It goes from short to longer so it goes further up the green yeah. uh, to the right but if you because when there's a pin on the right you're not aiming at the hole you're aiming in the middle of the green yeah. so if so if you go straight 90 degrees from the hole and left five paces left you're off the green so if you you're already aiming at that spot so you're aiming already aiming kind of off the green nearly and if you pull that you're bouncing it into the down slope and into the hedges so yeah. you nearly you just nearly got to ha- hit a really good shot you nearly got to play kind of short and you know you don't know where the wind's going you just got to hit whenever the wind says what the wind's saying so it's, why it's they, just a brutal hole. it's why they say that hole's so good for a left-hander mm. yeah because if, if they pull exactly it, pull it it's gonna right, go longer it's gonna right, go yeah. long exactly they, they, exactly they so you know the weak left. shot for a right-hander is short right so I mean, that's why I hit it in the water on the last day. A lot of people hit it in the water, obviously. Um, you know, the whole the co- the tournament's kind of made right there, um, just because it's 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 not an easy. It's not. It's just a, it's just a strange hole. Just it's not hard when you're on practice round and you just 
hitting it up, but when the pressure's on, it's not not an easy shot. And you've got that you've got that crowd behind you on twelve. Mm. I mean, they they they're not watching anything else. They are watching you. Like, they, like exactly. they're just they're just there. Exactly. I don't even know you hit yeah, the golf shot. Yeah, it's I mean twenty five people wide. I mean, it's just it just goes all the way back. There's a grandstand there, but we got to talk about how lonely. 11, 12, and 13 is. So you go from the first nine holes and 14 onwards with um, with just massive crowds. But then you go to you go to 11th tee on the left. There's no crowd on the left at all. No one really near the green because they're all on 12th tee. Yeah. 12th tee, you hit the shot. Obviously, there's people, beh- uh, people behind you hitting or uh, watching, and you hit it onto the green and onto the green there's literally no one there's only the rules official and the camera crew so there's like five people behind there and you make a birdie and oh, i made a birdie on the friday maybe and the crowd you know it's a few second delay it's it's <laughs> it's just weird and then 13 literally no one's there on the tee box and you're just it's just a little lonely place it's it kind of got me um it's probably something i need to work on be- or learn from it because you go from such a high to like where is everyone? Yeah. See, I, that, they'd be the shots I'd be enjoying the most. <laughs> I'd be like, thank God everyone's yeah. gone. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Um, just, I love that. I love how you just explained that corner because I think that's obviously it's amen corner. Everyone talks about 11, yeah. 12, 13, about how tough they are, etc. You, you've just finished nine, which, by the way, just a quick one, nine gre- ninth green just looks ridiculous. Like, I don't yeah, it understand. Is. It's like, th- is it three or four tiers going down? It's three tiers, so it goes... You go the first like four meters is up, so you know you, if you if you hit it on that you're going down. Um, there's like five meters of room maybe from that edge to the next slope maybe six seven, and then goes back up. It's these these slopes are t- these slopes are pretty small but severe, yeah. so they're, they're all tilted like this. But there's just small tiers. I mean you can putt easily off the green um, from. Anyway. middle of the green or front pin or anywhere behind the pin i mean it's just it, i think nine's my underrated hole nine's such a cool hole you have to hit your good drive and then you have like a little wedge in but you've got to miss it on the right tier or else it's it's just a tough tough hole and i made i think i made birdie there twice out of the four times so it was um it was cool you know it, obviously the last last round it was for the record so it was uh it was a cool um part when when you are six under through the foot through the first nine by, by the way how mad does that sound <laughs> you shot six under par for the front nine at augusta national not not on a practice day in the middle of nowhere yeah. on a sunday on the final day with the Sunday pins, you shot six under for the front nine. That's oh, ridiculous. No. Oh, no. Well, we've seen it firsthand at Kings Barnes. He can go deep, deep. He can go deep. <laughs> so that's he's just taking that. Game but it's a little, it's a little world. different from Kings Barnes <laughs> yeah. practice grounds, but, with the crowds. Um, the, the greens are a tiny, yeah. <laughs> the greens are a tiny bit faster at Augusta, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but you, yeah, you, you it six, was. You six yeah. under through nine. What? And again, I, I know I keep asking this question. Does anything change yeah. at that point? Like, does your yeah, so change at that point? you just got to keep you just got to keep yourself calm. You, I mean, I mean, there's a tip for everyone, obviously, but you got to control your breathing. You're su- it's such a high. You're in such a high. You've it happened to me quick. I was in that moment and I was like, "Holy, I'm six under. Like that's pretty good." But I know there's a lot of golf left, and obviously, it bit me in the butt. The, those 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 13 but it just it, you you've just got to calm yourself down because it's such a it's such a tough course that back nine can get you um so nothing changes but you just you just got to hit your shots every shot's committed every shot's every shot's you know calm down let's hit a good shot on to the next because it i i had a sense of sympathy for the guys that kind of have gone backwards um you know on 12 and 13 and 10 11 um because you're just out there and you just feel vulnerable because there's no one there there's just is you're just by yourself with your caddy and you're just out there and you just you just want to cry i literally wanted to cry after the 
13th hole, I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, I just made four burgers in a row. I'll... But then you're like, oh, you're actually two under. That's actually not too bad of a round. You're still going well. You would have taken it at the beginning of the week. Let's finish off strong. Yeah, you got to reset a little bit. <clears throat> Did you notice as well after that night, was there like, were you starting to, I know there's not many leaderboards around, but obviously you then, you got into top five then, didn't you, on the leaderboard? Yeah. Like, Yeah, see, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I only noticed afterwards, maybe on the TV or someone has told me. But, um, well, a lot of people have actually uh, was watching coverage and I was up on the TV. So that's how I found out. But there's not many leaderboards out there. Um, there's not many leaderboards out there. There's one on eight. And at so at the bottom, the people that are trending. So... You obviously have Scotty, uh, McElroy, you know, the top guys, maybe the top five. And then there's probably like 10, there's probably 10 names that could fit on the leaderboard. There's probably five or six people. And then at the bottom, there was like three trending players. So it was me um, and a couple other players. So you can kind of see your scoreboard, but you don't know if you're coming top five or top 10. So, you, I mean, you don't even know where the cut, what the cut line is. So you just you just go out and play. That's where you start getting your phone out and checking the leaderboard. <laughs> yeah. You could easily do yeah, it. I'm just checking my yard. Yeah. You, could, you could easily do it on nah. the 13th tee where no one's watching. You could be like, I'm just having a quick look at the leaderboard, see where I'm up to. Um, did you notice any more like TV cameras starting to follow you around at that point? Was it like, did you ever, did you feel like no, there's, there was more crowd uh, or, or anything? No. At that so point? You, um, obviously, if you're a golf fan, uh, you obviously know the Masters app shows literally every shot on that scorecard if you guys didn't know that so every shot was filmed by someone so there's some people that are on the middle of the fairway and there's some people that are just behind you all the time um are, uh, obviously one per like there's a couple people per hole mm -hmm. but they all go behind the first person you play with and then second person and then third so um no there was no it wasn't a it, it wasn't different at all i just went out and yeah had to play you mentioned a minute ago, we, we love the Masters app. It's yeah. ridiculous how good it is. Yeah. And I know for full well, if I was on the Masters app and I just played in, in the Masters, I would have watched <laughs> every single shot every single day for the next week. Please tell yeah. me you've done something like that. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was, one, it was good reinforcement. You know, obviously you have good feedback making birdies. My Like I've, I noticed how what my coach was saying about my swing, you know, I hit a lot of punch shots and I don't hit a lot of full shots. But at the time, you know, you're hitting shots and you're like, nah, you're, you're talking smack. So then you go out on the app and you, oh my God, I've literally hit punch shots on every, every shot. And I'm like, that's something I need to learn. And I wish that was like that on every tournament, but obviously um, it's a money thing and, you know, it's probably expensive to have cameras on literally every hole, but um, no, it's, it's special. I mean, it's, it's a very cool app. It's the best golf app you know well, yeah. golf tournament sure. that has that you know you, that feature do you reckon you've watched every single shot of your tournament yep yeah yep. when i was in the physio <laughs> oh no on no, 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 oh well like of that of the masters yeah i um you know i had to look at i had oh well when i had time off so i went to the physio i was getting treatment i would you know you know i had my boots on for the um recovery and i just was looking at it you know it's fun to obviously watch there's no there's no um commentary but um, which would have been cool, but yeah, it was just, you know, just your shot, which was, um, which was really cool. You know, you can use it for many reasons, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just special. It's just awesome for people back home, especially in Australia. Cause they've, you know, it's two, 3 AM when they, when we are playing so they can just watch it when they wake up. Yeah. Give me your favorite hole on the golf course. And we've talked about toughest. What's your, what's your absolute favorite hole? Oh, Man, every hole is so cool. Every hole is so special. Every hole has its has its special thing about it. Um, if, you had to, if, you had to pick, if you had to pick one hole, if you could only, I don't if you know. Could only, I actually don't know. To, There's so to, many good holes out there. To you, Min, right, to get an entry next year, you have to. You can you can come back. To get entry for next year, you can only play one hole. What's it gonna be? Oh my god. Maybe oh, I don't know. Too hard. Two's pretty cool. Two's pretty cool. There's so many there's probably like five holes I can say that are like awesome, real like the top, but I just 
every hole has its trick to it. And it's I, just, always, I, 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 I really love, like every hole. I always love, and, I, and when I went in 2018, it was, I had to sit, I love the 16th. Yeah. yeah. The part, the 16th. Yeah. I just, visually. That, see, that to me, that hole, I, I, I went for it on the last day, but all the other days it was too into the wind. So it, like, it just seemed, and it's a freaking tough wedge shot. You're, that is probably one of the biggest slopes you're hitting a shot on. It's like this, and you're hitting a wedge shot. And I hit one wedge shot, and I literally thought it came out like a stinger. And I'm like, I hit that out of the middle. Like that's a joke. Like, what but do you mean, you're, what do you, mean you're you don't realize you're on that slope. On six on the par three though, the sixteenth. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Fifteen. I was talking about fifteen. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. 50. No, I'm, sixteen. I'm, it's very cool. Sixteen is very cool. Yeah. Um. Do you, Do you mean the slope and the approach to fifteen? Yeah, fifteen wedge shot. So a hundred in, hundred and fifty in. Uh, that wedge, that wedge shot is that's got to be one of the hardest shots on the course. Um, did you did did any day me, did you, any day you go for it in two? Yeah, the last day um, I hit a five iron in, smoked my drive, hit it, and then it had five iron in. Um, and I three putted, so that's probably what I'm a bit nice about. That's not my favorite hole on fifteen, but <laughs> sixteen is very cool. There's so many people watching and. You got to hit a good shot, or you have this funky ass putt that you have to go, you know, up the hill or down the hill. Which I had on the last day, and I three putted because it was, you literally couldn't stop it on the right side. I was on the right to that back, back middle left pin, yeah. And you just can't, you can't stop it. You have to, you literally have to hit, nearly hit the crowd and let it come back down. Oh it's that, God. it was that severe to me. It's crazy. Obviously, you said yeah. that before you went, you had the practice round with the caddy. Was he called Brian, did you say? Um, yeah, was, Brian. And then you've obviously, you know, you've had some advice off people. You've now played. You've done an amazing, you tied 14. You finished, you've had an amazing week. Do you feel even after that one tournament, you've now got so much more in the locker for like next time, you've learned a lot more. What was the kind of key things that you found from actually being there? Um, I mean, just obviously getting to know your surroundings, but also just, you just need to know where you, where to miss it at Augusta. You just cannot, you cannot, it's so easy to make bogeys because you hit it in the wrong spot. And I mean, it's a real tough up and down, you know, it's big slopes and the greens, the greens get so fast that, but that's probably the, that's probably the main thing I got from this year and the practice rounds I, I had earlier in the, um, just before the tournament and prior to the tournament. So I, uh, that's probably the, I mean, for a player, that's probably the biggest key. And obviously there's going to be heaps of amount of people of still there um, every year. So that's something that you can always look forward to. Um, but just the course is so awesome. You just got to, it's pretty generous off the tee, I think. There's some holes that are tight, but second shots, you just need to be good with your second shots. Do you think it suits your game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I... I mean, before the round, before the tournament, you're going to say you're going to, you know, hopefully play well. But I, I honestly felt really good that week. You got to, you just got to shape it a lot off the tee, which I really like. You know, the straight holes sometimes get me because obviously the straight shot's the harder one. But like ten, I mean, it just sh- it, you can draw it as much as you can, and you know, the fairway is actually eighty meters wide because you start it out right and you turn it, or you keep it straight. It's actually not too bad, and if you kind of hook it. Like toe hook it, you're actually not too bad as well. So there's some holes out there that um, is r- just so fun. It, it just it demands a fade or a draw, which yeah. I really enjoyed. So well, well, I, and I, and then it was my best putting putting stats of the year. Oh no, of my whole whole life probably um, at the Masters this year. So wow, that was that's really class. cool. Yeah, that, that must fill you with a lot of confidence. Mm. So yeah, as the as the week's coming to an end and you've wrapped it up and you've tied fourteenth and and as much as you probably didn't have any expectation levels, that's got to have surpassed any level of, of expectation you'd like to think. When you leave in Augusta, are you, on, are you looking back and going, I can win there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Scotty played unbelievable golf, but other than him, you know, I don't think I was that far off. So it's, it's you got to play there a couple of times and, you know, really, really get in your head that, this hole you could par all four rounds and you're making sh- one or two shots on the field. So um, I think next time I get there, I will, I will, you know, keep obviously keep the birdies. I think I was top five in birdies or something. So uh, that was cool. And then just 
you know, minimize the bogeys um, and then the double, one double. Um, and, you know, you could be high up there. That, that's pretty impressive to play yeah. the full week and have one double bogey. I mean, that's, yeah. pretty, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Min, thank you for sharing that story awesome. with us. Um, it was so good. I, like I say, I could probably, I'd, I'd almost semi want to ask you about every single shot and every situ- situation, yeah. but I, I think I'm happy to. That, <laughs> that, that, that'd get maybe a bit too geeky, maybe over a couple of beers when we meet up again in person. Um, well, yeah. I'm guessing you obviously playing in the Open St. Andrews. Yeah. You'll be defending. Scottish. That's it's the week then, before, isn't it? Yeah, at your, Scottish the you're week still before. the current champion, aren't you? Yeah. It was only last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow, yep. that's pretty yep. cool. So you're obviously defending champion for the Scottish Open. You're then moving into mm-hmm. the Open. Um, excited for that kind of build-up, moving into more Lynx golf, moving into kind of, obviously, that'll be the final major of the year. Um, and 150th at St. Andrews. That's going to be pretty special. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be special, um, obviously, to defend. Um, I haven't been able to defend my first tournament that I won in Vic Open just because I had stuff going on and COVID kind of pushed it back. Um, and, yeah, I'm just excited to defend. You know, the course obviously suits me and um, I'm playing. I feel like I'm a lot, I'm a lot better player than last year, um, which is good. And hopefully play well, you know, I'll hopefully get a good good group out there. You know, some of the top names are out there and obviously St. Andrews, it's going to be special. I played there a few times and, you know, um, we got to do that special video. Um, yeah, yeah. It in reverse. You know, I, I, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I played it in reverse, so I should know the course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a good, it's a awesome two weeks. I think my family's going to come out and support and yeah, it's going to be Well, if, if you awesome ever do week. need an icebreaker with Tiger... You do know the story. It's the that he desperately wants to play. So if yeah. you ever rub shoulders, just, just kind of nudge him oh, and just go, by the way, uh, I've played the old course in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's actually a funny story about Tiger. I um I was on the putting green, like I said um, before, and he was he was there. And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty confident person. I, I just went up to him and he wasn't looking and I went up to him and I said, hey, Tiger. And then he looks at me. Hey, buddy, and just walks off. <laughs> but I, I, obviously, I um, I had a lesson off him at Sage Valley, like fifteen minutes away from Augusta, like five, six years ago. I was going to ask him about that, but his manager was giving me the deaf stare, so I didn't, um, what? I didn't bother I, asking. You've not told us about the story. <laughs> you've had, you had a, you had, a, you had a, you've had a lesson off Tiger. Yeah, I mean, this was like as a junior, say Sage Valley tournament, um, and a special guest, Nike guest, comes along and. First year, Tiger came, and um, after the first round, he was hitting balls uh, next to us, and he stopped hitting balls, and I was hitting balls, and Noda Begay and him were there, and they, he literally came right behind me, and he was like, "Oh, what are you, what are you working on?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm just hitting shots," and he's like, "Let's let's shape some shots, you know, don't overdraw it, don't overfade it, let's just hit some shots." And there's photos out there with, you know, he was literally like right next to my face and we're pointing at something and yeah it's pretty cool i always i always share that if people forget you know i share that <laughs> oh that's outrageous so yeah, i think dude. it's safe to say that you're going to have a, a huge fan base at the open at the scottish obviously you had a, a really hardcore fan base before but the amount of comments we have oh, a facebook group for people, this podcast love you. and when you were obviously killing it at the masters the amount of people because they a lot of them obviously watched the video with rick they watched the um the break yeah. 75 at king's barnes the podcast with yourself and you've got a lot of hardcore fans from this podcast now so i think you'll see a lot of those guys at the open which will be great yeah exactly i mean it was it was actually crazy every tournament after our video um i i saw you on the on the rick shields podcast and the video like that was yeah that was i mean it's just sick it's cool obviously you've got you've guys got a big fan base and i've just i've just you know it's it's cool to you know just from a video like people coming out and watching me and um, so that's that's a really cool um, love, achievement for you guys, that. and obviously it's 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 great to share stories that I don't get to share to the public. So I hope they enjoyed this one, and um, hopefully more stories come along. Definitely. <clears throat> and I said to I said to you, we should have signed him <laughs> seven and a half percent commission on everything he does <laughs> since the video. Uh-huh. We'd, we'd be retired by now. Yeah. Uh, no, I, it's honestly, it, I'm I'm like a proud parent seeing you do so well, and it's awesome. And I can't wait to see you again. Let's meet up either at the Scottish Open or the Open. Yes. Good luck with everything. Thank you for sharing your stories. Yep. If you don't follow Minwu already, check him out on Instagram. He's awesome on Instagram as well. Um, thank you for that, pal. And, yep, uh, legend. 
yeah, that was class. I'm going to listen back to that even myself many, many more times. <laughs> um, catch you, yeah, buddy. No enjoy, Thanks, enjoy a bit of time off with the family and the missus, yes. and uh, we'll catch up soon, mate. Cheers, mate. Yes, we'll do. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So that was absolutely awesome. Amazing. What a guy. What, what a guy. guy. I, I genuinely, right now, I think he's going to win a major. I would love him to. The game he's got, what we saw firsthand at King's Barnes that time, and obviously what he's done in majors now, he has to. I'd love him to. What I feel quite confident with, and we said it after the podcast, after we played with him last time, he is honestly the best ball striker I've seen still in person. He's the... 100%. 100%, in 100% person. Yeah, he's the best golfer ever. I, well, I didn't play, but being around. Outrageous. And, and we've been around a lot of very, 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 very good players, yeah. but he seems to just hit it. Differently. And he, he can go deep. He can go super deep, which he's proved, obviously, that they said that nine holes. Ridiculous. So, yeah, hopefully we're getting back on again around summertime. Thanks for listening, everybody. We shall see you next week. Yeah. It's nice to have you back. Thank guy. you. Quick rating on Apple if you want to. Five stars would be great. Uh, or like the video on YouTube, whichever. See you soon. Bye.